Hello, Pat McGrew. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you okay. Um, Now, Yay. perhaps we should let everybody know about the setting that we find you in right here. So um, how are all of you doing? Hey, for all you people who don't have pictures on your, your uh, Zoom thing, uh, please add them because that's empowering. You don't want to be going into Zoom meetings with your, your male folks uh, without your picture there. It's important to be seen. So where I'm being seen from today is the Parkview Medical Center in Pueblo, Colorado, where at 10 o'clock on Monday night, uh, my son's twins were born uh, <laughs> with a surrogate a superstar surrogate, uh, the lovely Samantha, and uh, they were born naturally. And uh, she, you pr probably could have heard her screams wherever you live. It, it was it was a bit of an event. But uh, River uh, came in at six pounds, two ounces, and she is amazing. And Forrest came in at six pounds, nine ounces. And I do the math on that one. You'll understand what she was carrying around. Um, they were 37 uh, weeks and four days when they were born, and uh, we're all very excited. Can't wait to take them home. Well, I just want to obviously say congratulations. I have, I lobbied and I campaigned to become an honorary auntie, and I think that I won that election. Yeah. So, um, but I just want to, I mean, obviously you are super important in my life and so is Jonathan. And this is just um, such an amazing day, couple of days. And I just want to thank you so much for, I mean, you had every reason in the world to say I can't make it, but yet there you are in a hospital room uh, broadcasting to, to everybody. Um, and um, it is why you were the first recipient of the Gurley Award. You um, continue to be a mentor, community leader, a, a, a uh, an educator, um, everything to everybody. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, and just to um, get into this conversation, um, first of all, if you don't know Pat McGrew, you should know Pat McGrew. She's an industry legend. Um, there's, there's so much background. I would just say, go to her profile and, and, uh, and connect with her or just, uh, we do a podcast, a pr the print report. Um, she's a co-host. She's like I said, she's the manage, she's the managing director of the McGrew group. And, um, she's also, um, now a co-founder of the print university along with Brian McAbee, which we're going to be speaking about today. And to get us into that, um, I wanted Hello. to um, mention a interesting Hello. conversation that, um, okay, let me just out. turn off Molly's video. Sandy, can you get that please? Okay, I got it. Uh, sorry, Pat, you can still hear me out? No yep, I got you. Okay, got you. Okay, um, so I was uh, recently at Label Expo and I had a amazing Okay, I turned off my own video, apparently. Oops, no, we got you. Okay, now we've got me. Okay, yeah. um, I was at Label Expo and I had the most amazing conversation with a woman named Paola Yinone from All Four Labels. And she told me that uh, she had just read a book and in, I had asked her, you know, she's, she's in Europe and uh, there's, if we think we have a, a system here, the European system of the printing industry and all of that um, is based in tradition. So uh, we can, we can say it that way and everyone can kind of understand uh, a little what we mean by that without basically saying it's a bunch of white guys running around uh, there or, or just guys general. Cause not, I mean, obviously there's people from different countries there, but the point is that I asked her, you know, over the years, as she's rising through the ranks to run this giant global company, uh, you know, how how is it different uh, going, you know, going to these meetings now and how, how have things changed? And she looked me straight in my eye, Pat, and she said, I changed. She said, I get into rooms by elbows and study. And I might 
need to kick myself and scream, not kick and scream, but fight my way into those rooms and say, I demand to be there and I deserve to be there, but I must be prepared once I am in this room. And I thought that that was the perfect segue to why the print university is on a stand your ground um, theme, but knowledge is power. I'm going to let you take it from there. It it absolutely is, Deb. And, and you know, I, I think for all of us who've, who've sort of climbed ladders, climbed them up, sometimes climbed down them, sometimes uh, did high wire acts between them. I think we, a lot of us have done all of this. You know, I was a, a CEO of a software company in the 80s and 90s. And uh, at the time, whenever I would go to a meeting, my business partner was our, our um, he, he, he was our technical guy, right? He was our chief research officer. And uh, we would go into meetings and people would start trying to negotiate contracts with him and he'd laugh. And he'd say, yeah, I, I have no idea what you're saying. You need to talk to her. And, and it happened consistently. Our biggest customers were Xerox, IBM, the largest healthcare companies, the largest banks, the largest brokerages, uh, the, the PSPs that serve them. And there was not a single time when we did not have to have that conversation with someone because the two of us would walk in the room and the assumption was that I was the secretary taking notes, right? I, I was the assistant. And um, that was not the case, right? That, that was in no way, shape, or form the case. In fact, one time when I was going into Canada with him, we were actually negotiating to sell the company because he had decided he was done being a, uh, a software developer. And so we were going to sell to a Canadian company. Uh, boy, talk about turning your hair gray on that one. Um, so we're standing at customs, you know, where you have to tell them why you've come into the country. And uh, so, or, you know, we're here on business, you know, we're, we're selling our company to a Canadian company. And the guy looks at me and says, well, why are you here? <gasps> and you know, my partner looks at me, she's the, the CEO. And he goes, no, 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 really? Wait, you're just here to go shopping? I mean, he was forceful about it. He was aggressive about it. And I, you know, like, I pulled out my business card and said, no, really, I'm the CEO. I'm negotiating the deal. And he goes, yeah, just, yeah, go, yeah, just go. What's the right. world coming to? Yeah, what's the world coming to? Who and are so we letting was... into this country? Female CEOs, it's all going to hell. And I wish I could say that that doesn't happen today, but you know, it still happens to people like us every single day. And all you can do is be the smartest person in the room. And it is sad that we have to be. It's sad that we actually have to be so much better prepared and we have to be so much more intuitive but in a lot of ways I think you know the universe wouldn't have put us here if it didn't think we were up to the task so our job is to be intuitive smart observant and sm as smart as we can possibly make ourselves about the situations we're walking into because sadly if we make a mistake, it's it's eight x the mistake of of a male counterpart making the same mistake, and and it just is sad, but it is the fact, and so we can't fight it, so we might as well just embrace it, and kill them with kindness, right? If we can kill them with kindness, and we can be more intuitive, and we can make those better decisions, and help move processes along. That's the goal. So the print university came out of conversations I was having with print shop owners who couldn't find people to hire, right? And for the last 10 years, Ryan and I've worked together. Uh, he used to work for me at Keypoint. And we tried to sell the idea of bringing that 001 level of education to the marketplace, to a diverse marketplace. Regardless of race, color, or creed, regardless of rain, wind, rain, sleet, or hail, you know, what could we put together 
that would empower somebody to be able to walk into a print business and be ready to learn the next thing they need to learn. Because what print operators were telling us is they didn't have good feeders anymore. They, they didn't have the vocational schools anymore. They didn't have the good feed systems. So people came in who might be really enthusiastic, but didn't know the difference between a toner device and a Heidelberg, right? They didn't know the difference between, you know, a cut sheet inkjet and a wide format printer. And if we can give them the vocabulary, we can give them just a view into everything, the words they need to understand and how they fit together, how print shops work, if we can give them a little bit of a heads up, then when they are ready to walk in that door, then they're ready to be trained because the hardest thing in the world to do is to train someone at a job if they don't even know what the words you're telling them mean. Can you imagine being, you know, a, a, a delivery from a, from a temp agency? You've uh, graduated from high school. Maybe you got a couple of years of community college. Nobody ever told you what the word imposition meant. The, what you remember from your English, English class is that imposition means you're being, you know, aggressive with somebody. And now we're trying to talk to you about imposition and you're not even sure what you're supposed to do with that word. Ganging. Oh my God, that doesn't sound like a good thing, does it? Ganging up on people sounds like we're going to bully people. How do we bully? Wait, do we bully people in the print shop? No, we actually take a lot of little things and we gang them up. So the print university came out of a lot of those conversations. And I think one of the reasons we've been successful with it so far is because the organizations that that have been licensing from us have that same vision of empowering everybody. We don't care if you're male or female. We don't care what your orientation is. We don't care if you're tall or short. We don't care what color your hair is. We don't care what color your eyes are. We don't care what language you speak. If we can help you, then it's better for our industry. It empowers everybody. And and. The, the people that we've been talking to who have been through the courses and have been through the classes, um, it, what they tell us to a one is now I understand what somebody else told me I needed to know. I, I couldn't understand what they were saying, but I was too embarrassed to say I didn't know. Okay, every one of you, those are not words that should ever come out of your mouth. I was too embarrassed to ask the question. It doesn't make you look weak. It doesn't make you look stupid. It doesn't make you look deficient. It makes you look smart. If you are smart enough to ask a question, you are asking a question a lot of other people around you want to ask, and you become the leadership force. Please be the leadership force with the people that you work with and empower everybody, empower all the women, all the young women coming up behind us, but empower the young men coming up behind us too. And, and make everyone understand that only by working together will we actually be able to keep this industry the powerful force for communication that it is. Because everywhere we go in the world, we see it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Now, so the the print university i mean it has a real breadth of <laughs> courses there it's not just necessarily it's I'm old well it's not just necessarily <laughs> terminology 101 no. um no. but i wanted to really bring this to everybody today because you don't have to wait for your manager to approve this. You can do this mm -hmm. on your own. You mm -hmm. can learn about the things. And look, Pat, I've been there a million times, you know. I mean, I'm fortunate enough that I get to ask you my what I call my stupid questions, which, I mean, I only recently understood about UV printing and the light. I'm like, oh, like a light bulb went off. I mean, I've been around it for years. And it but was never a light bulb. It was a light bulb, but I've never asked the question, you know, yeah. just because I'm like, everyone just assumes what I know what it is. So I'm just going to keep it moving because I don't want to feel, feel stupid. Yeah. But the point of the matter is, is that had I, you know, said, excuse me, I'm really sorry. I don't understand how this works. You know, I could get further in my conversations with people. I could get further with the, with the next thing that I could learn about it, but I, 
almost in, a, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud and admitting it. I keep myself in a certain level by just blocking out the technology conversations because I don't understand what people are talking about. The print university helps with all of that. And I really want you to share about that own ownership. So think about it this way, Deb, when you and I first started talking, you know, 15 years ago or more, um, you had uh, that print buyer's mentality, that agency mentality. You knew what good print looked like and you didn't care how it got there, right? And over the years, we've dragged you towards the technology step by step, inch by inch, right? And Glory. to the point no. where in 2016, we stood next to a giant inkjet press for two weeks with you helping me do color correction with your expertise and me translating what you told me into technical engineering speak so that we could get the color out of the machine that we wanted, right? To the point where working together, we made it all work, right? because I had the language. And over the years, you've built up more and more of your vocabulary and your understanding of the language. That's what the Print University is designed to do. Basically, play Ryan and I for everybody, where we can take everybody by the hand and walk them through. So the way we divided it up is we said, okay, what's the basics that everybody really needs to know about different kinds of print shops? Because think about it. Some of you folks work in commercial shops, some in transaction shops, some in pure DM shops, some in combo shops, some in wide format shops, sign and display. There's, you know, some in publishing shops, packaging shops, L&P shops. You know, some of you have all of the above. And the terminology is actually different and the workflows are different. One of my favorite words, workflow. Well, our workflows are a little bit different in every one of them. So the, we started out with, here's how these different kinds of, of shops operate because they call things differently, right? They So you'll hear different kinds of words in these shops. Then we start talking a little bit about the technology. You know, here's what offset really is. Here's what gravure is. Here's what litho is right here. Litho offset, here's what that really means. Here is what toner means. Here is what inkjet means and some of the places that they get used because they get used in a lot of different places. And then we start digging into things like, you know, my favorite thing, workflow. So how do we get stuff from our head? Oops. Composition systems and creative systems. So each one of the sections is, is done that way, right? Everyone is, is set up that way. All right, so we've got that. That it is, It's a great system. It's lovely. It does what it needs to do. Um, we did it in podcast length episodes. So you could watch them on your phone, right? So you could sit while you were, while you're walking the dog. I, okay, so it depends where you live, if that's a good idea or not. But like for me, I, I walk in a rural space, so it's okay. I won't get run over by anybody or on the treadmill or whatever. It's bite-sized pieces designed to, to be easy to digest. And we, we did it in such a way that we license it to large organizations, but individuals can sign in too. Uh, a shameless commercial plug, 75 bucks a month and away you go. Um, and you have and access just to say, you have access to everything on the, on the platform. And there's I mean a million videos there. That there are uh, 63. And um, so there's a, a little bit difference between the licensed version and the buy it by the month version, um, because for our licensees, we do a little bit more. We give them quarterly market updates as well. You know, here's what's going on at the shows. Here's what's going on in the market. Here are announcements you should be aware of. Uh, and, and we also take requests. So uh, some of you may already have been through uh, what is called um, G. How are they calling it? GPU? GPU. So the Graphic Media Alliance is one of our licensees uh, through the folks at APAN. And uh, I was just with them on Monday and um, they were uh, telling me, you know, so what they've done is they've taken our content and they've wrapped some quizzing and certification around it so that they're actually granting their members 
uh, certificates of completion for the different levels of the university. And they've done their own branding on it. And, and we're delighted by that. We provide video content. We spent a year developing the initial set. And now we add quarterly. We already know what we're going to be doing for, for 2024. We're going to be talking a lot about how to hire people and what characteristics to look for. So we'll be adding a lot of that stuff in. But what they've done is they've now added certifications and quizzing to it. Some of our other association licensees have done the same thing. Um, some of our, our vendor clients have uh, wrapped it into their uh, learning management systems that are part of their HR systems, right? So that they can use it as well. So it, it's got a lot of variability, but the bottom line is the goal was to make education accessible to people who've been told it wasn't available, right? right. I mean, right now, go ahead and try and find a university degree or a community college degree or even a vocational degree in printing, unless you're fortunate enough, enough to live near one of the very few universities that offer it, it's tough to come by. And yeah. it's hard to find apprenticeships. The really cool thing that Graphic Media Alliance is doing, they're actually partnering with uh, vocational schools that teach automotive um engineering and and a lot of the the sort sort of technical trades trying to recruit those people into the print industry and then you sit them down in front of the print university and they understand what the connection is and we get a whole new workforce out of it so that's kind of what we've been doing well i just want to thank you so much for democratizing um education um and for making it accessible to everybody theprintuniversity.com Check it out. Um, if if you work for an organization, suggest that perhaps they invest in education for everybody. I see. I see sometimes come through the regional organizations in the U.S. They're announcing uh, that it's available to to their members. Uh, if you're a member of one of the regional organizations that does that, take advantage of it. And as always, uh, Pat, thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations on the twins, on the babies. Really.